Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and I'll be taking a look at this NVIDIA GTX 1080 graphics card. This is the Founders Edition and I've also included benchmarks at the end of this video, so watch out for that. Let's take a look at the specs first. It's the first Pascal GPU and it's made using a 16 nanometer manufacturing process. They've packed in 2560 CUDA cores and it has a core clock of 1607 MHz and boost clock of 1733 MHz. They're now using 8 gigs of Micron's new GDDR5X memory with 256 bit memory bus and memory bandwidth of 320 gigabytes per second. You'll need a 500 watt or greater PSU. The 1080 is an efficient card with a TDP of 180 watts, but that may go up a bit if you overclock. Here are some features. I talked about multi-projection, VR, and Ansel in my sneak peek video, so please hop on over to that to get a closer look. I'll give you a link in the description below this video. This card supports SLI, but you'll need the HP bridge to maximize performance. It's G-Sync ready, and there's fast sync. With G-Sync, it matches the game FPS with the monitor's refresh rate, but there's a cap depending on your monitor and implementation of G-Sync. Fast Sync allows you to run games at high FPS without tearing. For example, if you have a game running 200 FPS, but your monitor has a refresh rate of 60 Hz, the frame buffers pick the best 60 frames and feed that to your monitor. And that's why there's no screen tearing or stuttering like you get with V-Sync on or off. The 1080 is also game stream ready. This allows you to stream games from your PC to your Shield device over the internet. You get NVIDIA GPU Boost 3.0 support. This helps with overclocking because they've tightened up the offset between the frequency and voltage. You have compatibility for the latest APIs such as DirectX 12 and Vulkan. Let's talk nerdy features and improvements. First up is enhanced memory compression, which reduces memory bandwidth demands, and it's good for games that have lots of large textures. Async Compute gives you another little performance boost through hardware dynamic load balancing, compute preemption on an instruction level, and for the first time ever, pixel level graphics preemption. This keeps all the cores working at all times and eliminates idle time. Pascal now supports HDR video, which gives you more vivid colors. That'll be using DisplayPort 1.4. At the present moment, there are no compatible HDR monitors, but there will be in the future. Since this device decodes and encodes HDR, you'll be able to stream to the NVIDIA Shield and play HDR games on your TV or other connected display. Here's what's new with overclocking. Now, the voltage and frequency are not locked. You can create a dynamic voltage frequency curve. Before, you could do this manually, but now you can set voltage and temperature thresholds and it'll generate a curve for you based on that. This is a sample card, so I have no accessories to show you, but I'm sure you will have them when you purchase your card. On the back of the card is a matte black PCB with low profile metal backplate that helps to keep the card from bending. This card measures 10.5 inches in length and it comes in a die cast aluminum shroud with vapor chamber cooling and blower fan. Here's the PCIe 3.0 X16 connector. We have the single 8 pin power port in this section. And these are the two SLI connectors. The rear vent holes are different from the norm in that they're allowing more air to escape, therefore improving the thermal performance. As for the ports, you get three DisplayPort 1.4 ports, an HDMI 2.0 B port, and one dual link DVI port. You can achieve 8K at 60Hz using two display ports. This card can also do 4K at 120Hz. I've installed the NVIDIA GTX 1080 into my Skylake system. I'll link you the video of my Skylake build in the description below this video. Let's take a look at the benchmarks. First up is Valley. At 1080p ultra quality, the boost clock got to 1911MHz without any overclocking. We had a score of 4387, the max FPS was 208.3, and it never dropped below 41.8. The average FPS was 104.8. We also tested it at 4K and got a score of 1,257. The average FPS was 30 and the high and low were 17.9 and 57.3. During benchmarking, the max temp observed was 80 degrees Celsius and it ran nice and quiet. You can use Afterburner or Precision X to boost the fans, but that will also increase the noise. Next up is 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra. We achieved a combined score of 6,393 and 29.74 FPS at 1080p. At 4K, we saw a combined score of 2,589 and 12.04 FPS. I jumped into Witcher 3 and these are the benchmarking results. I ran everything in Ultra with Hairworks on. At 1080p, the minimum FPS was 67 and the max was 73, and the average FPS was 69.7. At 4K, the minimum FPS was 30 and the max was 36, and the average FPS was 33. The last game I tested was Doom. Everything was on the highest setting. At 1080p, the minimum FPS was 98, and the max was 201, and the average FPS was 161.1. At 4K, the minimum FPS was 46, and the max was 68, and the average FPS was 56.5. That wraps up this look at the NVIDIA GTX 1080 graphics card. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Join Tech Lover Facebook, join Tech Lover Gun on Twitter, and join Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Also, be sure to follow me on my other YouTube channels, JTL Lifestyle, 
Lifestyle, JTO Cuteness Overload, and JTO Love Life and Advice. I guess it's bye for now and see you later!